Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Tiki, and in this video we're going to be learning about PHP pagination. Okay, so this is a diagram that I've created to explain things a little bit better. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over this paginator class which creates the pagination links. And what I've done here is I've incorporated the paginator class here in the movies listing page. This is what the final result is going to look like. It's got all of our movies and it's listing five of them per page because that's the amount, that's the limit that I'm specifying here. So I can, I can just keep clicking on its random pages and as you can see it's printing five different movies per page. I can go to the last page and it prints out the last three movies here and I can go to first page, I can go to next page, I can go to previous page and it all works. Now here you may have noticed I have all the variables and I'm displaying their values just so you guys can understand what's going on here a little, a little bit better. Okay, so first of all you should go ahead and download the modified version of the displaying movies which utilizes the paginator class and you should also go ahead and download the paginator class itself so you can follow along uh, this video. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all Whenever we're creating a pagination, you got to realize that we're basically what we're doing is we're limiting the amount of the amount of data that we want to display on page. So that is done with a limit keyword in MySQL. The first number that's followed after the keyword limit is the starting row from which to start selecting our records from. And the second number is the total rows to select per query. So that's what it's showing here. It's showing the row that we're selecting from which is 45 and then it's selecting a total of five records including 45 itself and it's giving us that result message so if i went to php my admin and i selected from the movies table and typed exactly that query 45 and 5 and i press go you can see that it's selecting uh movie id 46 to movie ID 50. And the reason it's uh, not 45 is because MySQL starts its count from zero. So if I go back into the SQL and I just select from movies so you guys can understand what I'm talking about, here it's selecting the rows and you can see that the rows number is zero but the record ID of the starting row is one. So just a subtle difference and just keep that in mind for now. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go over the paginator class. So, first of all, we declare all the private variables and they're private because we're not going to be accessing them outside the class. They're just for internal class use. So we got our MySQL connection. We got the limit, which is the number of records to show per page. We got our current page, the query in a string. We got the total amount of rows and we got our starting row. Okay, so we declare all those private variables and next function or method is the construct and the construct is called whenever we instantiate a new object. So whenever we call the paginated class here, that constructor is called here and it takes in two parameters. The first one is the MySQL connection which we make here and the second one is a query which is this query here which uh, basically what it does is just selects all the movies. Okay, that's the constructor and here we go ahead and we run that query and we also uh, we get the total amount of uh, rows returned which we're, we're going to be using later to figure out how many pages total we're going to have on our pagination. Okay, so the next method is get data and this is where uh, the main th thing happens. It's basically what it's doing is it's limiting the amount of uh, data that we're going to be displaying. So it takes in two parameters. The first one is the limit and the second one is page. Then we store those in their variables and we can also specify all. So if we specify all it's just going to return all the records and they're all going to be printed out without the actual pagination. Else we keep going and here's where we figure out uh, the row to start and the amount of data to limit. And uh, we subtract one from page because to account for that 
uh, MySQL discrep discrepancy, <laughs> and then we multiply it by the limit because that's how many pages we're gonna have, uh, what's how many movies we're gonna be displaying on the page. So if I pull up a calculator just to explain this a little bit better, for example, if I'm on page 10, I subtract one from it, I get a nine, and then I multiply it by the limit, which is how many movies we're displaying per page, and I get a 45, which is the exact number that I would get if I ran the query that I've previously ran like this, limit 45, five, and that's gonna display the movie, uh, five movies starting from ID 46. So that's how that works, and this is uh, also, I'm specifying this in a diagram, and this is the row start, and here you can see that page minus one times the limit, which is exactly what we're doing inside the class. So this visual is just so you guys can understand this a little bit better, you can uh, download this uh, chart and just stare at it, stare at it a little bit longer so until you, until you understand what's happening. Okay, so we create this query here, and uh, that's how we figure out how many records to display per page. And uh, then we store everything, we run the query, and we store everything inside the results array. And then down here, we call the std class, which is a class to create a new empty object. And then we store all of our data and return it as an object. What's important to note here is that results data is what we're gonna be accessing because that's what's gonna store all of our rows. Because here we're storing inside the results array and then here we're storing inside the result data by providing results which we stored earlier. Okay, so this is getting all of our data and uh, that's how all that works. And now we're ready to create the links. So let's go ahead and go over that. Okay, so first of all, what it does here is we can also specify all, and in that case, it's just gonna return nothing, so it's not gonna print any pagination. But if we didn't specify all, of course, then we're gonna do all this heavy lifting here and create the links. And uh, here's where I'm gonna go in depth and explain how all of these links here are created. Okay, here we go. So first of all, what we're doing is uh, we figuring out the last page by getting our total, which we figure out a little bit earlier by running that over there. And we divide that by the limit. So what happens here, if we have 998 results in this case, and we divide that by our limit, which is how many movies we're showing, we're gonna get the last page which is 199.6, but we use a sale function, which rounds up the number to 200. And that's exact number that we get here, which is last, and it's gonna be 200. So if I go back to the browser, that's our last number here. So basically it's the last page. Okay, so we took care of the last page. Next up, next up we figure out the start link number and the end link number. So if I go back here and I click on some random page, so this is this would be the start link number, which is 186, and 196 would be the end link number. So that's just how we, just so we know how many links to print out on our pagination. And if we go back to the diagram, you can see that start, and the way we create start is page minus links. So if we're on a current page and the page is 10 and our links is five, then 10 minus five equals five and that's how we get our starting link count. In a similar way, we get 15 by simply adding links to the current page. So it's 10 plus links equals 15 and that's how we get the end. We need that because later on, we're gonna use a loop to print out start to end, and that's how we print out all the linked numbers that you see here. So that's what it's doing here. It's figuring out what the link start is, and it's figuring out what the link end is. 
Now, the reason we want to check if links is greater than zero is because if we are on the first page, we're not going to be printing any links that are on the left hand side. So it's just going to look like this. And that's the reason why it's doing it. In a similar way, if we're on the last page, we're not going to be printing any links on the right hand side because that's the last page. And that's why it's only showing links on the left hand side. On the other hand, if I go back to some random page, it's printing links on the left hand side and it's printing links on the right hand side. So basically, we're checking for that here using a ternary operator and we're doing it for the last page as well. So now that we've taken care of our links, uh, here what we're doing is we're printing out all the debugging variables that you see here. And you can keep uh, looking at these and uh, you can see that the start is 186 and end is 196, which is uh, our end and start links. And here's our five, which is uh, the limit, which is how many movies we're printing per page. And uh, here's the amount of links. And you can look at all the data and just keep referring to it as I, as we go along here. Okay, next up, we just print out the HTML UL tag with a bootstrap class. And then what we're doing here is we're checking if the current page is one. And if it is, we want to disable the previous page link, which looks like this triple arrow thing. So, so if we go on a page one, you can see that this triple arrow previous page is disabled because there's no previous page to go to. And if I go back to another page, then all of a sudden it's enabled. So that's what's happening there. We basically disable it if we're on page one. Next up, we build the actual uh, previous page link. And the way it's done is, okay, so first of all, if we're on page one, we don't want to be linking anywhere. So you can see here that if I'm on page one and I keep clicking on it, it's not going anywhere. Now, if we're on another page, we want to basically subtract one from this page to get to the previous page. So if we're on page five and now we're going to page four. And if I keep clicking on it, it's going to reduce page by one. So what it's doing is just subtracting one from it. And this is exactly what's happening here. So current page minus one, easy as that. Okay, so then we just add everything to HTML by concatenating it to the string. And we're going to later return that HTML here. And that's how we're going to be printing out all those all those links. Okay, here, what's happening here is uh, we're printing the triple dots before the previous link. So, so that would be these guys here. And you can see they just showed up as I clicked on the next page. That's because there are, it's indicating that there are more pages here. And the way we're doing it is basically we're saying if the starting link is more than one, then we want to be printing out, print out the first page link. Okay, next up we got, we're printing all the numbered page links. And this is where all the main thing happens where we're printing out all the numbers start to end. And that's how all these numbers here are being printed out. So, so we, sp we set the I to start and we keep looping through all those links until the end, which is, so it's going to be in this example, it's going to print five to 15, which is all the numbers here. So that's exactly what's happening in this loop. We have a start and we have an end and we keep looping until the end. And then, uh, also we highlight the current page by, we check if we're on a current page. And if, if we are, then we set the class to active. And that's the reason it highlights the current page in blue. If not, then it's just going to print I, which is the current page number. Okay. So if end is less than last, uh, moving along here, then we want to, we want to print these triple dots and we also want to print the last, last page number, which is 200 here. And if we're on the last page, it's not being printed out anymore. And the dots are gone as well. 
and instead this is the active page. So the reason we want to be printing it out uh, separately is because uh, basically to let the user know that there is a last page and make it user friendly in a similar way where we printed our first page. All right, let's uh, keep going here. So next up we got if page is last, then we want to disable uh, the next link. So this thing is going to be disabled and also we want to make sure that we're not linking to it and that's exactly what we're doing here. Okay, and uh, otherwise we want to increase the page by one. So if I go back here and go to random page, that's how the next thing works. It just keeps increasing the page by one in a similar way where we created the previous page where it's page minus one. And let me see if I missed anything. So you, you guys can uh, keep looking at this cheat sheet uh, if you miss something and you want to figure out how things work. As you can see, I have the last variable here and I have for the previous, I have page minus one. For the next, I have page plus one, just like we talked about. And the start link is created uh, once again with page minus links. The end link is created with page plus links. Here we have our starting row and the amount of data we're selecting. That's how all that works and that's how it all comes together. Finally, we concatenate the next page to HTML and then we return the whole thing to our to the output, which is how we get all of our uh, links printed. Okay, so you can see that I've incorporated this paginated class here and what I'm doing is, of course, I'm creating the MySQL connection and then I'm creating the query to select all the movies. And then this is the important part here. It's basically passing the variables uh, that you see over here, which is limit and page. And uh, we get the limit, which is five and the page uh, starting page, which is one. And here we just set the amount of links to display per page. So if I set this number to 10, we're gonna get 10 links per page and now all of a sudden we got all these links and I'm just going to reset it back to five. Then I'm calling the paginator class and get data function which stores everything inside of our results. Now remember it stores everything inside the results data so if I print out this results data here. Oh no. Hold on a second. What? Oh results results it's plural okay so you can see that it's uh it's got all the movie information and that's exactly why we're looping through that array down here you can see that i'm looping through the results data over here okay so that's it for the pagination. I hope this was useful for you guys. And if it was, please like this video, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.